President, how important is this visit? Mr. President, how important is this visit? Everyone in? Yes, sir. Mr. President, it's an honor to welcome you back to the White House and the Oval Office. And earlier this week at the UN General Assembly, I made it clear that, uh, that no nation can be truly secure in the world if, in fact, we don't stand up and defend the freedom of Ukraine uh, from the face of this Russian brutality and aggression. That's why we brought together a coalition of more than 50 countries more than 50 countries to help Ukraine defend itself, and uh, it's critical. And that's why, together with our partners in Ukraine, we have provided humanitarian aid, as well as tens of millions of people with food, clean water, and so much more. And that's why, that's why we've begun the process of formalizing our long-term commitment to Ukraine security alongside the G7, and with other partners. And that's why we supported just and lasting peace, one that respects Ukrainian sovereignty and its territorial integrity. Mr. President, the brave people of Ukraine, and that's not hyperbole, the people of Ukraine have shown enormous bravery, enormous bravery, have inspired the world, literally inspired the world with their determination to defend these principles. And together with our partners and allies, the American people are determined to see to it that you do all we can to ensure the world stands with you. And that is our overwhelming objective right now. So welcome, welcome. We have much to talk about. Thanks so much, Mr. President. So warm and, and strong words to all the Ukrainians from, from you. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. I'm glad to meet you. Uh, it's already the so time this year. Thank you for the invitation. Our regular dialogue is proved that our countries are really, truly allies and strategic friends. And we greatly appreciate the vital assistance provided by the United States to Ukraine to combat Russian terror, really terror. Today, I am in Washington to strengthen our coalition to defend Ukrainian children, our families, our homes, freedom and democracy in the world. And I started my day in the U.S. Congress to thank its members and to people of America for all the big, huge support. I felt trust between us and it allowed us to have a frank and constructive dialogue, Mr. President, and this trust and support I felt from both chambers and both bodies and grateful for this. Uh, then with the First Lady, uh, I honored innocent victims uh, of September 11 memorial in Pentagon, all those who tragedy, who dead, who died on American Airlines flight 77. It's very important to all in the world to remember 
and the victims of terror and value everyone who fights with it. And now I look forward, Mr. President, to our discussion for the benefit of our nations and the world. When it comes to weapons, we will discuss everything with a special emphasis on air defense. And just to say that, especially this day, uh, one year ago, we had, we made <clears throat> a big exchange of prisoners, uh, war prisoners and journalists. And uh, it was uh, when this day when we got uh, home, defenders of Azovstal and also citizens of the United States. And I'm happy that we, we did it. Uh, Alexander Druke and Andrew Tai Hume, both from, both from Alabama. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you all. Mr. President, what's your message to America? Are you confident Congress will provide the funding for Mr. President, the American people, Democrats, Republicans alike, families all across our nation understand what Ukraine is fighting to defend, what generations of Americans have also stepped up to protect and preserve. It's pretty basic — freedom, liberty, and sovereignty. And as I made clear at the U.N. this week, and you were there, the entire world has a stake in making sure that no nation no aggressor is allowed to take a neighbor's territory by force. The American people will never waver in our commitment to those values. That's why, together with our allies and partners, we will continue to provide security assistance to support Ukraine's progress in reclaiming its territory. And we'll continue to provide humanitarian aid to help millions of innocents suffering from Russia's aggression. Russia alone Russia alone stands in the way of peace. It could end this today. Instead, Russia is seeking more weapons from Iran and North Korea that would violate multiple UN Security Council resolutions that Moscow itself voted to put in place. And a new package of launchers and interceptors that's going to protect Ukraine, Ukraine's grain silos, hospitals, schools, and power plants. That will help save Ukrainian lives. Just as we're committed to helping Ukrainian people defend themselves now, we're also committed to helping them recover and rebuild for the future, including supporting reforms that are going to combat corruption, creating an environment where businesses can thrive and where American and European businesses want to invest. Russia's bombing grain silos in Ukraine and separating families Kidnapping — this is what I can't get over — kidnapping thousands of Ukrainian children. Instead, with the days beginning to turn colder, Russia hopes once more to use winter 
as a weapon against the people of Ukraine. But as I discussed with President Zelensky, the people of Ukraine are steeled for this struggle ahead, and the United States is going to continue to stand with you. Today, I approve the next tranche of U.S. security assistance to Ukraine, including more artillery, more ammunition, more anti-tank weapons, and next week, the first U.S. Abrams tanks will be delivered to Ukraine. We also focused on strengthening Ukraine's air defense capabilities to protect the critical infrastructure that provides heat and light during the coldest and darkest days of the year. Because that's what this is all about, the future, the future of freedom. America can never, will never walk away from that. That's why 575 days later, we stand with Ukraine and will continue to stand with you, Mr. President. And that's why we're so proud of being able to be with you. Mr. President, we're, uh, we're with you and we're staying with you. Thank you. So thank you very much, dear Mr. President Biden. Thank you for a warm meeting and uh, very produ productive, strong negotiations. And today we have some important results. First, we uh, agreed to work on the future force of Ukraine. It's very important. And this strategic decision that will allow us to prevent any, any new aggression against us, against Ukraine, our people. And this will be one of the outcomes of Vilnius G7 declaration and our bilateral security um, arrangements. Uh, fifth, we agreed on specific steps to expand the export of grain from Ukraine, and uh, and and uh, we will continue to work on the peace formula and uh, and uh, preparing inaugural summit. So, thank you so much, not only for these points, for all these points, for all these 575 days. Thank you. Oh. Are you are you confident that Congress is going to support your uh, efforts to get this supplemental aid? Did you get any assurances? I'm counting on a good judgment of the United States Congress. There's no alternative. Thank you. All right, we ready? Thank you so much.